Uh, yeah, actually, I'm gonna need those. Yeah, bring, uh... Yeah, bring another one over. Bring you another one. Uh, napkin. Just a napkin. It's a little weird. Cut out there. If it cuts out tonight, I'll try to get it resumed back as quickly as possible, guys. Give me one second. everyone who is watching um, this is the 2023 Passover um, uh, if this is your first time uh, watching or uh, seeing this for the first time you know I hope you uh, ask questions later um, I'm always welcome to questions and um, uh, hopefully if you don't know too much about the Bible. Hopefully, you know you learned something tonight. So, um, uh, with that being said, uh, just a brief uh, rundown as to what's happening. It is basically the retelling of the story of um, the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. It's basically what it is. But with this um, service, we are actually retelling it in the fulfillment of what Jesus did. So, um, we are going to be reading from what they call a Haggadah, which is, literally means the telling. Ha meaning the, and Gada means telling, the telling. So, um, with all that out of the way, I do hope that you guys enjoy it. Uh, like I said, ask questions later. Um, and we are going to get started. So, um, but first, as always, with any service, we're going to uh, start off with a word of prayer. Father Yahweh, in your Son, Yeshua's name, we ask all these things that you will bless this service tonight. We pray that as we go before, we go through the service, that you will look deep into our hearts that you will forgive us of any trespasses against you um, as we partake in this service may we remember that we are enter entering into a covenant with you and may we take it serious um, as with anything with the word so father as we uh, prepare to go through this Passover service we just pray that you will be with us bless this service Bless those that are watching and watch out for them. And Father, if there is anyone out there who doesn't know you, we just pray that you will turn their hearts to you. So in, in your Holy Son's name, we ask all these things. Amen. <coughs> um, let's see. We're going to start with page three, Mom. Um, preparing for Passover. Um, you guys will actually see me take the phone and show you guys different things with all the plates um, here in just a moment. As we prepare for Passover, Exodus 12, 
15 says, For seven days you are to eat matzah, or unleavened bread. Um, matzah is basically like a flat cracker almost. On the first day, remove the leaven from your houses. Now, in the ancient times, this is actually what they did. They used to remove all of the leavening out of their uh, houses. Anything that had yeast in it, they used to remove it. During the days before Passover, leaven items are removed from the home to make it ready. These include all breads and cakes, anything that contains yeast. Preparation begins with a thorough cleaning, culminating in a ceremonial search for leaven. Let us also ready our hearts for the Passover Seder, or the order of service. Tradition teaches us that in each generation, we must consider ourselves as having personally be freed from Egypt. As we prepare for this experience of personal redemption, let us part, put far from us the leaven of sin hidden within our hearts. Haggadah, which means the telling, Passover is a story that has been retold for thousands of years. It is a story of miraculous transitions from slavery to freedom, from despair to hope, from darkness to light. Its greatness is the greatness of God. Its timelessness comes from the eternal truth of his involvement with his people, even as he is today. As God cared for the children of Israel in ancient times, he cares for all who are his today. Upon the table is a Seder plate, holding the ceremonial items of Passover. These are the bitter herbs, the roasted egg, a sweet apple mixture, parsley, and a bone. Curious things yet all part of the telling. Let us see, hear, and feel the truth of God's love. One of the Messiah's last earthly acts was the celebration of Passover. Gathering his friends in a small room in Jerusalem, he led them in a Seder. I have really wanted so much to celebrate this Passover with you. He passed the foods among them. It was there in celebration of the deliverance from Egyptian bondage that Yeshua, Jesus, revealed to them the mystery of God's plan of redemption. He spoke to them of his body and his blood. He explained to them that he would have to die. It was no coincidence that Messiah chose the Passover for setting, for the setting of what is called by some communion, or the Lord's Supper. For in the story of the Passover lamb, Yeshua could best communicate the course he would be taking over the confusing hours that were to follow. Here, as we participate together in the Passover Seder, may we recall the great redemption once again by God's hand. As is part of tradition, if I can find the, can the matches, it is custom that on every major service, including a Sabbath service on Friday night, to light candles. As we kindle the festival lights, we pray for the illumination of the Spirit of God to bring great personal meaning to this, our Messianic Passover celebration. Um, since it's usually done by a woman, I guess my mom might want to light the candles. And as she lights the candles, um, if you want to, I don't know if you want to bring them. Okay, that's fine. As my mom does that, there is always a blessing that is said during each part. 
Blessed are you, O Lord, o Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by his word, and in whose name we light the festival lights. As for, as light for the festival of redemption is kindled by the hand of a woman, we remember that our Redeemer, the light of the world, came into this world as the promised seed of a woman. So for all you ladies out there, we thank you. <clears throat> the four cups of wine. And the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I am going to do. Exodus 6, 1. As the Lord spoke these words of encouragement to Moses, he revealed to his servant the plan by which he would redeem the children of Israel. Both of us, Mom. Exodus 6, 6 and 7. I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians, rescue you from their oppression, redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. At Passover, we celebrate these promises of redemption by drinking from our cups four times. With each cup, let us remember the union that God desires. And I don't know why I'm getting phone calls. I don't know why I'm getting phone calls in. The cup of sanctification. It is what is, a, it is, what is known as the Kadesh. I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. Exodus 6 verse 6. As each time. A cup is mentioned. We will always fill our cups. lift our first cup together and bless the name of the Lord. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei puri hagafen Been a while since I've done that, by the way. Um, all of us, Mom. Blessed yes, O you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. As he began his final Passover Seder, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, shared a cup with his disciples and said to them, Take this and share it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Let us drink of this, the first cup of Passover. It's now time for us to wash our hands. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4 says, Who may go up to the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy presence? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. Now, of course, we know that there is a symbolism to this. But with the symbolism comes a literal action. And at this time, we are going to wash our hands. Yeah. 
as we lift up the bowl of water to one another and share in this hand-washing ceremony, let us also reflect upon the gesture of humility and the lesson of commitment made by Yeshua the Messiah, when on that night he laid aside his garments and girded himself with a towel. Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples and wipe them off with the towel wrapped around him. He said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me Rabbi and Lord, and you are right, because I am. Now if I, the Lord and Rabbi, have washed your feet, you should also wash each other's feet. John 13, 5, 12 through 14. Partially. And the Hebrew is called Karpas. The people of Israel still groaned under the yoke of slavery and they cried out, and their cry for rescue from slavery came up unto God. Exodus 2.23. On the Seder plate, you will see that we have parsley. Passover is a holiday that comes in the springtime, when the earth is becoming green with life. This, this vegetable, called karpas, represents life, created and sustained by Almighty God. But also, in Egypt, for the children of Israel was a life of pain. Suffering in tears, represented by this salt water. Let us take a sprig of parsley and dip it into the salt water, remembering that life is sometimes immersed in tears. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Now let us together eat the carpas. As a tradition on Passover, there are what they call the four questions. The Ma Nishana. And this is represented by the four times in Scripture where God tells Moses, When your children ask you this, this is what you shall say. Exodus 12, 26 and 27. When your children ask you, What do you mean by this ceremony? Say. And these are the four questions that are asked during this night. On all other nights, we eat bread or matzah. On this night, why do we eat only matzah? Mm -hmm. Number two, on all other nights, we eat all kind of vegetables. On this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? Number three, 
and on all other nights we do not dip our vegetables even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? Number four, on all other nights we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we eat only reclining? Now, of course, I know you guys can see that my mom is sitting. Normally on Passover, reclining is, is a symbol of freedom. So usually what they would do is they wouldn't sit around a table. They would actually sit on the floor with pillows underneath them celebrating their, their freedom from bondage. And now we answer the four questions that were just asked. Exodus 12, 24. You are to observe this as a law, you and your descendants forever. It is both a duty and a privilege to answer these four questions of Passover and to recite the mighty works of our faithful God. On all other nights, we eat bread with leaven. But on Passover, we eat only matzah, unleavened bread. As the children of Israel fled from Egypt, they did not have time for their dough to rise. Instead, the hot desert sun baked it flat. But even more than that, the scriptures teach us that, that leaven symbolizes sin. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 and 7. Don't you know the saying? It only takes a little leaven to leaven a whole batch of dough. Get rid of the old leaven so that you can be a new batch of dough. Because in reality... You are unleavened, for our Passover lamb, the Messiah, has been sacrificed. During this season of Passover, let us break our old habits of sin and selfishness and begin a fresh, new, and holy life. This is the bread of affliction. The poor bread which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who need share in the hope of Passover. In this bag, there are three pieces of matzah. They are wrapped together for Passover. There are various explanations for this ceremony. The rabbis call these three a unity. Some, <coughs> some consider a unity of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Others explain it as a unity of worship, the priests, the Levites, and the people of Israel. But those of us who know Messiah can see this in the unique triunity of God. Father, Son, and Spirit, three in one. In the matzah, we can see a picture of the Messiah. See how it is striped. But he was wounded for because of our crimes, crushed because of our sins. The disciplining that makes us whole fell on him, and by his bruises we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. See how the matzah is pierced. I will pour out on the house of David and on those living in Jerusalem a spirit of grace and prayer, and they will look to me whom they pierced, they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. Zechariah 12, verse 10. As 
as I reach into this bag, I reach in for the middle piece of Mabasa. And I break it. I will return one half of the Mabasa back to its place in the bag. Just as the middle piece of the bread of affliction is broken, Messiah too was afflicted and broken. One half is now called the Apicomen, the coming one. It is wrapped in a white cloth and set apart for later. It is wrapped in a white cloth just as Messiah's body was wrapped for burial. Just as I have put away the epicomen, so Messiah was placed in a tomb, hidden for a time. But just as the epicomen will return to complete our Passover Seder later, so the sinless Messiah rose from the dead to ascend into heaven. Let us now share a piece of this unleavened bread of Passover. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, ha'motei lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. But on Passover, we eat what is called maror, or bitter herbs. As sweet as our lives are today, let us still remember how bitter life was for the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. You would be the mushroom. Well, I don't want to say too much of this. I know this stuff is this stuff is potent on here. For those of you who don't know, I love horseradish. My mom personally doesn't like it, so I use mustard for her since it's still quite tart and bitter. The Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel and work them relentlessly, making their lives bitter with hard labor, digging clay, making bricks, all kinds of field work. As we scoop some maror onto the piece of matzah, let us allow the bitter taste to come to shed tears of compassion for the sorrow that our ancestors knew thousands of years ago. Barukata Arunai Elahenu Malakha Alam Ashur Kinshanu Badiv Baro Betivanu El Achilat Maror. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has set us apart by his word and commanded us to eat bitter herbs. Mm-hmm. Woo! 
That's some tart stuff there, I'm not going to lie. The carousel. Now I'm going to show you guys. I think you guys can see it. The children of Israel toiled to make treasure cities for Pharaoh, working in brick and clay. We remember this task in the mixture of cheroset, made from chopped apples, honey, nuts, and wine. That's what I forgot. I forgot the honey. Let us scoop again some bitter herb onto a small piece of matzah. But this time, before we eat, let us dip the herbs into the sweet carousel. Yeah, that's fine. And then a little bit into the... Yeah. We dip the bitter herbs into the carousel to remind ourselves that even the most bitter of circumstances can be sweetened by the hope we have in God. As they were reclining and eating... Yeshua said, Yes, I tell you that one of you is going to betray me. They became upset and began asking him one after the other, You don't mean me, do you? It's one of the twelve, he said to them, someone dipping matzah in the dish with me. And as we remember this, let us eat. On all other nights, we eat either sitting or reclining. But tonight, we eat while reclining. The first Passover was celebrated by a people enslaved. Once we were slaves, but now we are free. The children of Israel were instructed to eat the Passover in haste, their loins girded, their staffs in their hands, their sandals upon their feet, awaiting departure from the bondage of Egypt. Today, we all may recline and freely enjoy the Passover Seder. Messiah said, Come unto me, all you who are struggling and burdened, and I will give you rest. <coughs> the story of Passover is a story of miracles, a story of redemption, a story of the mighty power of God to overcome evil. The Lord had promised the land of Israel to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet here were their children in Egypt. The Pharaoh, who had come to power, feared them. These foreigners in our midst are prospering and have grown numerous, he thought. Suppose they join with our enemies and turn against us. Pharaoh decided to exert greater control over the people, imposing harsh and bitter slavery upon the Israelites. Still, God blessed his people with strength and number. Pharaoh grew more frightened and ordered every baby boy among the Israelites to be drowned in the Nile River. One Israelite couple hid their little boy for three months. Finally, entrusting his future to God, they set him in a basket and placed him upon the river. His sister, Miriam, watched as he floated downstream. Coming upon the basket, Pharaoh's daughter took pity on the child and chose to raise him as her own son. She called him Moses, meaning drawn from the water. Moses grew and became aware of the travail of his people. One day, in a rage, he lost control of himself and killed an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew slave. Fleeing the palace and the eye of Pharaoh, 
Moses became a shepherd in the land of Midian, far from the cries of his suffering brothers. The Lord, however, saw the affliction of the children of Israel and heard their groaning. He would raise up a deliverer to lead them out of bondage. It was then that he appeared to Moses in the midst of a bush that burned with fire, yet was not consumed. Moses drew close and listened to God commission as God commissioned him to go to Pharaoh. Fearful and reluctant and reluctant, Moses agreed to bring God's message to the king of Egypt. Let my people go. As we fill our cups for a second time. We remember the trials that God put the Egyptians through. And with this, the plagues. Exodus 6, verse 6. I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. Moses left the wilderness to return to Pharaoh's palace, the very place where he had been raised. He returned with the message which the Lord had given him. But God himself warned Moses of the resistance that he would encounter. I know that the king of Egypt will not let you leave unless he is forced to do so. But I will reach out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will do there. After that, he will let you go. God sent plagues one by one. Yet with each plague, Pharaoh hardened his heart. The Egyptians became afflicted in discomfort with, with discomfort and disease, bane and blight. Still Pharaoh would not relent. With the tenth and most awful plague, God pierced through the hardness of Pharaoh's impenetrable heart. For that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and animals, and I will execute judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. A cup that is full is a symbol of joy. And indeed, on this occasion, we are to be filled with joy at God's mighty deliverance. But let us also remember the great cost at which redemption was purchased. <clears throat> Lives were sacrificed to bring about the release of God's people from the slavery of Egypt. But a far greater price purchased our redemption from slavery to sin, the death of Messiah. As we recount each plague, let, let us dip a little finger into the cup, allowing a drop of liquid to fall, reducing the fullness of our cup of joy on this night. Blood. Shake it. There you go. <laughs> Keep going. Ten. Frogs. Lice. Beasts. Disease. Boils, hail, locusts, darkness, death of the firstborn. At this time, we do not drink from this cup. We 
let it sit to remind us of the great cost that it took to ensure the slavery or the redemption from slavery. The Passover lamb. The blood will serve you as a sign, marking the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Rabbi Gamaliel, the teacher of Paul the Apostle, taught that in recounting the Passover story, one must be certain to mention three things. The unleavened bread, the bitter herbs, and the Passover lamb. We have eaten the matzah to remind us of the haste with which the children of Israel fled Egypt. We have tasted the bitter herbs to remind us of the bitter slavery they experienced there. Yes, I know this is not a shank bone of a lamb. It's actually a chicken bone. But the roasted shank bone represents the lamb whose blood marked the houses of the children of Israel, signifying their obedience to God's command. <clears throat> and the process by which they chose this lamb was very specific. On the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb or kid for his family, one per household. Your animal must be without defect. A male in its first year. You are to keep it until the 14th day of the month. And then the entire assembly, the entire assembly of the, con of the community of Israel will slaughter it at dusk. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the two sides and the top of the door frame at the entrance of the house in which they eat it. That night, they are to eat the meat roasted in the fire. They are to eat it with the matzah and the bitter herbs. Here is how you are to eat it. With your belt fastened, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you are to eat it hurriedly. It is the Lord's pass Passover. The blood will serve you as a sign marking the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I strike the land of Egypt, the death blow will not strike you. We are reminded by Moses that it was the Lord who himself who redeemed the children of Israel from slavery. And Adonai brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and a stretched out arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. For that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt. I, I am not an angel, angel, and kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men <coughs> and animals. I, am not a seraph, and I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I am not a messenger. I myself and none other. I am the Lord. Since the temple in Jerusalem no longer stands, lamb is not eaten at Passover. The shank bone reminds us, or remains to remind us of the sacrificial lamb. Now some of you may be wondering, why do I have an egg on the, on the tray, on the plate? Likewise, a roasted egg has been added to the Seder, to the service. It is called Kagiga. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it is a name signifying the special holiday offering. The egg is regarded as a symbol of mourning, reminding us of the destruction of the second temple. It is also considered by many to denote new birth and eternal life, since the shape of an egg shows no beginning and no end. We who have entrusted Yeshua the Messiah believe He is the Lamb of God 
our okay. Passover. <clears throat> like the ancient Israelites, we know that it was God himself and not an angel. God himself and not a seraph. God himself and not a messenger who achieved final redemption from sin and death. God himself through Yeshua who takes away the sin of the world. Dayenu, it would have been sufficient. They will gush forth the fame of your abounding goodness, and they will sing of your righteousness. Psalm 145, verse 7. How great is God's goodness to us. For each of his acts of mercy and kindness we declare, Dayenu, it would have been sufficient. If the Lord had merely rescued us, but had not judged the Egyptians, it would have been sufficient. If he had only destroyed their gods, but not parted the Red Sea, it would have been sufficient. If he had only drowned our enemies, but had not fed us with manna, it would have been sufficient. If he had only led us through the desert, and not given us Shabbat, it would have been sufficient. If he had only given us the Torah, but not the land of Israel, it would have been sufficient. But the Holy One, blessed is he, provided all of these blessings for our ancestors, and not only these, but so much more. Blessed are you, O God, for, your, for you have in mercy supplied all our needs. You have given us Messiah, forgiveness for sin, life abundant, and life everlasting. Hallelujah. Now, if you guys recall, earlier I had taken a piece of matzah out of the bag here and broken it in half, wrapped it up, and <coughs> hid it away. It is time for us to share in the apikomen, or the dessert, the final food eating at, eaten at Passover. It is divided up as the Passover lamb was from the time of the Exodus in, until the destruction of the temple. It is said that the taste of the apikomen should linger in our mouths. The Messiah broke matzah and he gave thanks to the Lord, saying, Barukata Arnai, Elahenu Malachalom, Ha Moselechem, and Ha Aretz, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. It was then that Messiah added these words This is my body, which is being given for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. Let us now eat the matzah, meditating on the broken body of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Let us allow this taste to linger in our mouth. I got it. I got it. And at this time we will also drink of the cup, the second cup, because though, even though we have suffered in our lives, we remember the joy once again that the Messiah brings to us, that even in our worst times, 
that as long as we keep our focus on Him, He can fill our cups to overflowing. Blessed are you, our Lord, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. The cup of redemption is next. And as we fill our cups a third time, this evening, This is the cup of redemption, symbolizing the blood of the Passover lamb. <clears throat> it was the cup after the meal with which Messiah identified himself. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, Adonai's arm is not too short to save. It is our own righteousness that falls short. Though the Lord searched, he could not find, he could find no one to intercede. Therefore, his own arm brought him salvation, and his own righteousness sustained him. Yeshua the Messiah left to the cup, saying, This cup, this cup is the new covenant. Ratified by my blood, which is being poured out for you. Just as the blood of the Lamb brought salvation in Egypt, so Messiah, Messiah's atoning death can bring salvation to all who believe. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Let us gratefully drink. Now I have an extra cup sitting here. This cup is for Elijah the prophet. At this time, since we don't have any children, the custom <coughs> is to Take one of the children, take them over here to the door. Now let's just see if anyone's outside. I know, it sounds like a little bit of a game, but, and yeah, to a certain extent, it is. Let's see, is Elijah out here? I don't think so. I don't think Elijah's out here. Nope. And there's a reason for this, as we will soon explain. We're going to turn on this other light right here. Malachi 3.23 says, Look, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now, Elijah did not see that. In fact, let me adjust that a little bit. Now, Elijah did not see death, but was swept away to heaven by a great whirlwind in a chariot of fire. It has been our hope that Elijah would come at Passover to announce the Messiah, the son of David. But before the birth of John the Baptist, an angel of the Lord said, And he will go out ahead of Adonai in the spirit and power of Elijah. And to make ready 
for Adonai, a people prepared. Later, Yeshua spoke of John. Indeed, if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, whose coming was predicted. I don't know why this isn't moving, moving around. There we go, that's a little better. It was this same John who saw Yeshua and declared, Look, God's Lamb, the one who is taking away the sin of the world. Exodus 6 verse 7 says, I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. For the last and final time this evening, we will fill our cups. This cup here is what is known as the cup of praise. And for the last time tonight, let us give thanks to God, our great Redeemer. Give thanks to Adonai, for He is good. For His grace continues forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for His grace continues forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his grace continues forever. To him who alone has done great wonders. For his grace continues forever. To him who skillfully made the heavens. For his grace continues forever. To him who spread out the earth on the water. For his grace continues forever. To him who made the great lights. For his grace continues forever the sun to rule the day, for his grace continues forever, the moon and the stars to rule the night, for his grace continues forever, to him who struck down Egypt's firstborn, for his grace continues forever, and brought Israel out from among them, for his grace continues forever, with a mighty hand and an outstretched storm, for his grace continues forever. <clears throat> to him who split the sea of Suf, for his grace continues forever, and made Israel cross right through it, for his grace continues forever, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the sea of Suf, for his grace continues forever. To him who led his people through the desert, for his grace continues forever, give thanks to the God of heavens. For his grace continues forever. Let us lift our cups and bless the name of the Lord. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olom, Barei pri ha'gahafen, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Our Passover Seder is now complete. Just as our redemption in Messiah is forever complete. Let us con conclude with the traditional wish that we may celebrate Passover next year in Jerusalem. And we are not speaking about physical Jerusalem in Israel. We are talking about our eternal home. The heavenly Jerusalem. Lashana Haba'a but Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, as some of you know, I missed out Passover last year. <coughs> uh, I was hoping to celebrate it, but things did not turn out well for me last year uh, due to stressful situations. 
and every time I do it, it's a blessing and an honor to be able to participate in this type of service. So for those of you who are watching, who, who were watching before, and um, for those of you who are uh, curious about anything that we did here tonight, do not hesitate to ask. I always invite questions. I always appreciate questions. If you have any questions about the Bible, if you have any questions about what it is that I practice, or anything of that nature, please do not hesitate to send me a PM and ask me. So with that being said, I thank you, and I want to send you out with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious upon you and give you peace. Let us finish with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we just thank you for this wonderful Passover service that you have allowed us to enjoy once again. Father, once again, I am deeply sorry for not participating last year. You know my heart is there. And Father, for those who have been watching, I pray that they have received a blessing out of it, that they have gained some kind of knowledge or perhaps their curiosity is piqued. And Father, I just pray that no matter what happens, that your Son, that your Holy Spirit will guide us, that they will be with us, that they will lead us into a much deeper relationship with you because it is you who matters more than anybody else in this world. And Father, we just thank you for your Son. We thank you for your, for your Son's sacrifice. <clears throat> and we pray for his soon return to this world to redeem us once again. Father, we just thank you. We ask all these things in your Son. Yeshua's name. Amen. Guys, once again, I thank you. And like I said, hit me up with questions if you need it. So, uh, hope you guys have a wonderful night. I'm getting ready to close down because I got to go to bed soon in an hour. But you guys have a wonderful night. Be blessed. And shalom.